why this will happen, eh? I was just thinking when uh, we were singing that song about being more aware of his presence, that that great woman of God, Catherine Corman, used to fill an auditorium simply because the presence of God came with her. And when she was speaking in the meeting, she would say, my friend has just arrived. And she was referring to the Holy Spirit. And as the Holy Spirit came in, people would be healed, people would be saved, diseases would go and sickness would go. And just as we were worshipping, we need to learn to, to genuinely worship the Lord when we minister to Him rather than just sing songs. We've got to minister to Him. And when you start to minister to Him, God starts to show you things. And I just saw a time coming when healing would break out for the whole world of tremendous salvation. I see many young people coming to the Lord and worshipping the Lord and leading those gatherings and leading those meetings. And I see the older people, like myself, with just tears in their eyes because they were seeing a move of God. And you've got to believe that God is going to move in a tremendous way. You know, if you've never seen a miracle before in your life, we're going to show you one right now. <laughs> This is the miracle, Brian. <laughs> Can you roll that out in church? I can't roll that out at all. As a, a miracle comes from God. But we're going to look at the Word of God. And really, what I want to do today is talk to you about value. Because we all have different values. And value might be the importance you place upon something or its usefulness to you. But value is important, isn't it, Josh? So, Josh, come on down. <laughs> You're not shy at the camera? Come on, man. All I look at is nice haircut. It's costing that haircut. <laughs> In more ways than one. Nice and smart. See the urgency he's got coming down here? <laughs> Willing, ready, and then we're gonna talk about value. I've got some items on the table here. Do you think that this is valuable? You can answer. You do speak. I don't see you drop them off, but you can speak. Do you think that's valuable? So Josh doesn't think that this, this book here is valuable. Have a good look. Why don't you think it's valuable? He doesn't value it. Because it looks old. Well, Brian looks old. <laughs> well, it's value. And God doesn't look at a cover. He doesn't look at anything like this and think, well, just because it's old, you're not valuable. Mm. You're as valuable when you're old as when you're young. You don't lose your usefulness before God. He still values you. But you're right, it is old. But you know something? Old things can increase in value. It's not just the thing because it's not new. All things can increase in value. Do you want to come out with that? Maybe antiques. You were here today. <laughs> antiques, they increase in value. How old do you think this is? It's just aged. Another year when I was thinking about it. <laughs> 40 years old. Anyone else a guess at this? And when? <coughs> 34 years old. Peter. 50. 60. Well, it's very old. You see, you said about value. How old is that? Read it out. 1875. No, before you say it's not Frank's journal. 1875. So, because of his age, we tend to think the value goes up, whether young or old. But value doesn't depend upon age, whether something is old or something is young. Some old things are of no value because they're worn out. And this looks a little bit worn out. And it looks a little bit old. In fact, as we know, it is old. 1875. So how old's that? Anyone do the maths here? I'm like... It's 147 years old. Wow, it's, it's mad, isn't it? 
that, that is that all. So it's all done on a number of us here, and a lot of you young, young people added together. So it has some value, but the value of this really depends on who owns it. That's where the value comes from. You see, to you, it's of no value, but to me, this is of important value. And the, depending on the person that owns it, that value is there. And when you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, he sets a value upon you. His value was to send his own son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die in your place. The Bible says that you were not bought back, redeemed, by bowls or goats, or gold or silver, but you were bought back with the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, God set the highest value upon you. He did not try to buy you back from the cheap. It cost him, and he set a value upon you. So sometimes we look at things and we think things are old. Things are a bit worn out and tattered, falling apart at the seams. And we think that they're not a value. But where God is concerned, it's a great value. The Bible tells us outwardly we're fading away. But inside we're becoming more glorious, more like him. So it's not just to look at the colour because it's damaged. It's what's really in the heart. And God often takes damaged things. And he starts to make them brand new because he values them. And God values every person here today. God values it. I'm valuing his opinion today, his view on what he thinks. So what about, what about this? Is that a value? I'm not turning on the thing. That was, that was going to be yours, not changing mine. <laughs> it says it's of value, but not of much. This value of this could have got you a Big Mac. Just think of that Big Mac. Nice burger. You know what, Big Macs? French fries. Simply could have been eating that there. Chicken, could have got a little bit of chicken with that. Delicious chicken. Our veins hiding somewhere. You make Jamaican jerky chicken. Get some of that. It's a value, isn't it? So this is a value. It's a value to the person who holds it. It's not a value to Sarah because it's in my hand and not in her pocket. So it's a no value to it. She might be thinking, if I had that, I'll value it because I could go and get a Big Mac. But because it's in my hand, she can't do that. <laughs> it's of some value. Well, let me just say this is of limited value. Limited value. It's five pounds, so it was right. It's only little value. But the amazing thing is today, many people value this above everything else. Everything in life revolves around earning money, getting money. And they think it's going to put them at the top of the pile. They think it's going to get them everything they want. But even though they have the cars, even though they have the houses, even though they have the clothes that they want, the designer watches, even though they have all the jewellery that they could ever think they could imagine, they still find that the money they have can't buy them what they're really looking for. Mm. It can't bring peace in their life. It can't give them a real hope for the future because prices change, economy changes, and so it's of limited value. You see, it's of limited value because I've got this in, and it won't go far. You know today that this fiber will not go far. And so it's of limited value. But what God gives you is of value, not only for this life, but for the life to come. And we've got to be people that trust in the Lord and value the things that God says, and not just value money and what the world says. And so many in life, and making, in a sense, money their God. Because that's all they pursue. That's all they're longing for. That's all they think about. But it's of limited value. Many people that are multimillionaires have gone to an early grave and their money has been no value to them. Even if you look at history, and there's some history scholars here today, even if you look at history, you will find that even the ancient pharaohs took all their wealth with them, so they thought. But there's no pockets and coffins. And you can't take it with you. It's of limited value. You want this limited value? 
Isso aí é. Dá pra você já usar o carro, gente, aí, ó. <risos> right, what about that? Can you see that? What is it, Josh? A gold ring. Is that a value? Yes. Why is it on the field? <laughs> Type of gold you think it is. That value of gold is different, isn't it? Mm-hmm. <coughs> what do you think? Is that a value? Okay. <laughs> it's 18 carat, it's probably about 5 grams in, in weight, so it's 18 carat gold, so it's a value, so it has a monetary value to it, mm-hmm. so a person would place a value on that, but this is a value to me, why is it a value to me? Because it's a wedding ring, it's a wedding ring. <laughs> You didn't really think it's going to buy here. <laughs> it's a value to me, so it's a sentimental value. Even if it never cost anything, even if it was just made out of tin, if it was a Coca-Cola big top, because of what it represents is a value. So we value different things. And the greatest thing that God values today is you as a person. It doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, where you've been, what you've got in material wealth, how good your education is, because some people seem to be brighter than others. God values you, and he's made you for a purpose. And the Bible says very clearly, buy from me gold refined in fire. And what God is really talking about, buy into his teaching, buy into his life, because it's more precious than gold. In fact, in the word of God, it says something about ladies. It tells us that he who finds a good wife finds a good thing. But it also says about a good wife is hard to find. A good wife is more precious than rubies, more precious than jewelry. So God values things differently and wants us to place the correct value upon others. So in terms of relationships with each other, with your husband, with your wife, your children, you have to value those things because God has placed a value upon it. And his value is greater. You see, to some person, they would buy something if they thought they really wanted it. They would pay over the odds of what it is valued. But to them, they just think they're getting the deal of the century because they value it. And God wants you to understand he values you in everything that you do. So that's of value to me. And many people hold on to things of sentimental values. But you know the sentiment isn't always valuable where God is concerned. People might hold on to teachings, things that they've been taught from a child. They may hold on to things that have been passed down to them by their parents. But they're of no great value. And we need to get rid sometimes of the clutter in our life and embrace the things that God values. And God wants you to value everything he's done for you. So what about, what about that, Josh? Pick it up, you show the people. Right. So Josh is saying, that's not really of great value. It's scrunched up, and it's not really as useful as it used to be. Sometimes God looks at us like that. He sees that we've just been cast away. But he reaches down into the gutter and he picks us off, and he starts to make something new out of what we are. He doesn't throw anything away. He doesn't waste anything. He doesn't say you're not as valuable as you used to be because you're a bit crunched off. You know, in life, there will be difficulties, there will be hardships, there will be troubles that come your way. And there will be things that put pressure on and you feel like you've been squashed off. But God says, I can take you and can straighten you out. In fact, sometimes when you share the word of God with people, it's like this. They don't value it. I tell someone about Jesus and they say, I'm not interested. I'm not interested in all that good stuff. It's not a value. You give them something to read, they take it, they throw it away. It's of no, no value. But really, we're not seeing what's within it. 
what's within it. And sometimes when we share the word of God with people, it is of great value. What does that say? A free pardon. A free pardon. And when you share the word of God with someone, they may scrunch it up, they may throw it away, but it is their opportunity of coming in relationship with him, of receiving the greatest prize you could ever receive, of coming into that relationship with the living God, who will absolutely transform your life, turn your difficulties into successes if you are trusting him. But people take the message that he's given and they throw it away, they say it's of no value to me. I'll wait for another time. And yet that pardon is there. That pardon is being offered. I'm pretty certain that there are many people in hell today that heard the word repent, only wish that they had said it. We've got to be people that value what God says. And what about this? You see, do you think this is a value? What is it? It's a Bible. It holds valuable information. It holds life-transforming information. It is God's letter to you. It's his love letter to you. And God wants us to understand that truth. So people used to say, didn't they, about the Bible, best information before you leave earth. And it is. It's not basic. It's absolutely true. So it contains truth. In fact, the Bible tells us that God's wisdom is to be sought after. It's more precious than gold and silver, more precious than rubies. In fact, the Bible says that fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. But many people, they open the Bible and they just look at it and they just think, it's just words. It's nothing more than words, Josh. You can sit there. Stay there, man. You there. <laughs> See, you're useful. You're of value to me today. You are valued, young man. Never think you're not valued, young people. So people pick up the word of God and say it's of no value to me. It's rubbish. I don't see anything in it. And I was like that. I always remember my brother finding some Bibles in a bin when he was doing a job at a certain place. And he brought them over and they began to read the Bible. And he was rocking the King James Version. I picked the Bible up and began to read from beginning to end. And it was of no value to me at all. There was nothing within it that seemed to appeal to me. I started to read it, and it was these said to doubt. I couldn't understand it was of no value. But the day that I got born again, I started to open the Bible, and something really started to happen in my life. It came alive. So every time I opened the pages of the Bible, things started to change in my life and my experience. And that's what God wants for you. He wants you to open the Bible and see his truth, but people open the Bible and see nothing because they don't allow the Lord to move within their lives. They just see nothing but empty pages. But God is a God that moves in amazing power. He basically says, if you would allow me to move in your life, it will come alive. So you open the Bible and it's there. The truth is there. He wants to move in your life. He wants to make amazing difference to you. So don't think the Bible is just a bell book about information. It's life-changing words from God to you. It's a guideline of how to live the best talk of life and these treasures in those pages. You see, if you want the best treasures, you've got to dig deep, haven't you? You've got to start to dig deep on the ground and not all on the surface. So people go on the surface and they walk and they go, oh, it's time to read the Bible again. And they're never really asking God to move in their life. But God wants to move in power, doesn't he, have he wants to move in power and he wants that Bible to come alive for you so that you open it, you close it, you open it, you close it, you open it, you close it. Woo! Woo, what's the smoke cloud? <laughs> That's what the Bible's like. It's a miracle working God. We need to trust him, it's a value to him. He wants to move in power within your life. So I'm just saying to you today, you need to value each other but above all you need to value what God has done for you and seek his life out as being the best one of the songs that we sung today was really been talking about he breaks every chain well I know that the Bible makes it very clear Josh I need you now apologies I'm right that's it. Pull it over there, like that. Just like the past few years. 
You see, this is what the Bible says. It tells us that the whole world, everybody in the world today is a prisoner to sin. And when a person sins, the wrong thoughts, the wrong words, the wrong deeds, just living independent of God. Because if you're not living for God, you're not serving in any way, shape, or form the heavenly Father, you're serving the opposite camp. And the Bible says because of that, you need bondage, you need sin. And it's like chains or restraints upon you. So you've not got the freedom to take hold of the blessings of God. You've not got the freedom to live the life that God wants you to live because the restraints are on you. You've got limited ability, but there's restraints upon your life that God wants you to be free. And no matter what you try to do, you can't get free of those shackles. And because of sin, these holds and these habits in people's lives, it may be drinking that's a major problem in your life and you can't seem to get free of it. It's holding you back. It may be smoking. It may be vaping. All those sort of things are holding you back. It may be your attitudes and your behavior. But it can be overeating. You sometimes ignore that one. It can be things in your life that are stopping you being as free as you're meant to be. But God wants you to be free. And the Bible says if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. Let's just let Linda pass. You're just on the camera now, Linda. Bless you. Amen. Amen. So God wants you to be free. He doesn't want all these restraints upon you. It may be sickness. It may be disease that are holding you back and it's a restraint. It does not give you the liberty that God wants. But God says in his word that if you would turn to him, you would turn to him and repent of all those ways. You know what returning to him means? It means to return, to turn away from the way that you were formerly going. That's what repentance says. And turn it back to God. And God said that you would turn around from your sin. <laughs> and this is the way on. <laughs> and my ankle spatter. God said if you turn around from your sin, you'll be free. He'll set you free from all those things. And so God can set you free from everything that's holding you. He really can. Now you might think that, oh well I know David, you've got something in the back that sets you, sets you free. But you're absolutely right, I do have something in the back that sets me free. And the thing that's in the back that sets me free is really the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. And that's something I'm going to do. Yeah. 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 Is James coming? <laughs> God wants us to be free. So today I just want you to value the things that God says. Don't ignore things and say, oh, Sunday school's boring, church is boring. You know why it's boring? Because there's no joy of the Lord in your heart. There's no desire of the Lord in your heart. Worship's boring. Worship's never boring to me because they encounter the presence of God. Being a Christian has never been boring to me. Because I see him in supernatural powers, then you'd be amazed at what he does. And he does those things today. And I know he's going to find him and got a purpose for you. Because he values your life. And he values every other person. And who knows amongst you, there may be people that would be great prophets of God, great leaders in the things of God, apostles of God, great worship leaders that would come from you. And God wants to, you to value the life that he offers you today. We're going to pray right now. I'm going to pray a prayer. And then uh, we're going to just have that. Get the singers out again. And we're just going to have a song. And then you need prayer after that, that song. We just come forward and we'll pray for you. And we expect God to do something in your life. Father, I thank you that Jesus Christ valued us so much that he was willing to give his life. Not money, not gold, or silver, or property. He was willing to give every part of his precious blood, every drop 
of that precious blood that we might embrace his life. He laid down his life that we might take it up. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we just simply receive your truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's just have the, someone else sing.